So in the past decade of led R&D teams in fintech companies, earning state-of-the-art financial infrastructure and payment platform. But today I want to speak with you about my insights. Now AI is transforming fintech. And now we use it to better predict the future, or at least in our neck of the woods. Now what Precise does is B2B embedded finance. That means that essentially big financial institutions come to us to better understand and evaluate smaller businesses. Our goal and our hope is that using our system will be able to eliminate some of the prejudice that they're experiencing and encouraging inclusion. Now, those smaller businesses are being misunderstood. And in the financial industry, being misunderstood means that they are mistreated. A recent study by the Federal Reserve has showed us, or has determined, to be honest, that evaluating smaller businesses is extremely expensive. That means that they gain very little access to capital. Okay. Barely any access to capital. If you think about what Tony just showed about those smaller businesses, struggling, gaining access to capital is what will allow them to grow. It's a fuel for their business. Now in this landscape, AI can come into play with amazing promise of efficiency. Now, traditionally and historically, you would have an underwriter going through the business, all the details on the finance, and it will take hours. Now, it will take minutes from thousands of dollars of cost to under 50. From well, my personal favorite, from accuracy, it is always varied and fully dependent on the specific individuals that will come and validate that company to something that we can rely upon, something that is always the same, something that can run 24 seven, and not just during office hours. For our specific use case, and we'll touch that number afterwards, it's under 3% standard deviation. Now, changing the way that it costs is what will change the incentive that the bigger financial institution have to actually assessing and giving them the value that they need. But, and there is always a but after every promise, right? It's not that simple. Doing AI is complex, is hard, is lengthy, it's costly. Probably any developer here, data scientist, whatnot, sat in a room when the business owner or product came in and said, I want AI to solve me this complex problem with AI. It will normally start with looking at tons of data. Data schemas, columns, everybody looking at what we have and trying to figure out the value that we can achieve from it. Asking like where the data came from, the specific column, which data source brought it. Is it aggregated? Is it a computed property? Why do we need it and how can we actually use it? It's called ETL, or our school kids will call it ELT, right? Extract, load, transform, essentially the same. Just to get started with it, we'll need the following stakeholders. Developers, data scientists, data engineers, sometimes machine learning engineers. For months on end of work, and it's extremely expensive work. Now, during that time, data will be moving around between systems, tools, owners, probably everybody screaming behind the scenes that nothing works, nothing makes sense, that the data isn't actually properly usable. It's a lengthy process. It's error prone and with a hard and long feedback loop. It's a very fragmented one. Now, in the, our industry, tech specifically, not FinTech, we try to find a solution for fragmented issues. We try to consolidate them. That's where MindsDB come into play. They allow us to move from an army of engineers to a superhero. Now, Superman, I know I'm a Marvel fan as well, but Superman works better here. And let's be honest, he's the stronger of the bunch. Now, before all the Marvel fans kill me, let's get back to AI. AI in any sector, but specifically in FinTech and finance, which is what I know best, is more than just coding. It's more than just algorithms. It's more than moving data around. It's about understanding the intricate details of finance, how money moves, why does it move, who moves it, how, how the businesses use the money. It's being a domain expert. It's what we need and what we want. Now, think about the regular developer. He will know how to code, right? An amazing one, he will get the product. Our unicorn developer, he will get the customer. But a domain expert, he will go far beyond. He will get the finance, how a natural files looks like, how ACH works, how an NFT transaction will work, how do we move money using Swift within systems, how Stripe moves money and when will it land, how much time will it take, how business normally uses the money. He is able to be a real superhero because of what he has and the knowledge that he comes with. Now, 
we spoke about the main issues, and I was super that we may be able to solve it. Let's see what we currently have, and maybe how we can solve it. What you see behind me, and since I don't have a microphone to go and stand near and point, I'll be speaking in colors, and my color blind, uh, blind associates here will be forgiving me. Right? My partner behind here is a colorblind guy, so I'm accustomed. Now, let's see the layer of the ground. What do we have here? Let's start with the basics. We have our database, right? I'll clear a little bit here. And we have our business user. On there, yeah, there we go again. Works? Great. So, we have our database, which we have regardless of AI. That's what we use. Will it be a NoSQL, SQL, MariaDB that showed us, or any other database? And we have the business user, so that we all need to have, otherwise there's no need for the company, right? Now, in the middle, what do we guys see? Is what we need to achieve AI, to achieve the insights and actions that we want to get from the AI's platforms. But AI normally doesn't work with our database. It works with data lakes, with object storage. So let's understand who is on the playing field. Here, we've got our developers. On red, the cogwheel, we've got our data engineers. And in blue, lab staff, we've got data scientists. Now, to get started, we'll be moving the data around. Our data engineer will bring an airflow or any other system you guys use to move the data from the databases to a data swamp. Now, the data isn't yet usable. The name suggests it, right? Swamp. So we're bringing Apache Spark. Our Databricks, again, doesn't really matter we we'll start sifting through the data, cleansing it, aggregating it, doing computation on that, whatever is needed to make it viable and usable. Saving it again. Finally, we can call our data scientist. We'll bring his pretty little Mac, open a Jupyter notebook, and start working with it. Now, make, let's make a few assumptions so we'll be able to get further. First, the data is spot on from the beginning. That never happens, but let's assume. Second assumption. He gets the business requirements. He understands the business and what he needs to do with it. Assumption, right? Third, super important here, the model is amazing from the get-go. It's accurate, fast, and does what we need. Tiny little issue after we got this trinity of assumptions, it's on his MacBook. It's not usable, right? We aren't going to ship the MacBook to every business user. Those days have passed. So what we'll need him is bringing our data engineer again. She will bring in SageMaker, and probably will call the CEO to get more VC money, because that's super expensive, right? So, SageMaker is here, and we're moving the model to the cloud. Almost there, we need a serverless endpoint. And finally, number 10, the business user gets the value that he wanted. Now, it's a lengthy process, costly, hard, lots of different types of individual using it, and from the business user perspective, he doesn't care but the company cares. And I think that industry standard is obsolete, and there's a new way that you can do it. That's what we do at Precise Finance. Now, as you see, almost everything is gone. We're left with number three now, not 10, the business user. Number one, the database, which again, regardless of AI. And in the middle, we got two stuff. One, the superhero, right, domain expert, and mine's DB. Now, because MindCB works directly with the database, no need for an ETL, right? We can say au revoir to our machine learning. Uh, sorry, machine learning, not yet. <laughs> data engineer. Now, since MindCB works with SQL, REST, SDK, it doesn't really matter, your domain expert developer will be able to code directly as a model against MindCB. We're left with the MLOps part that we had here it will be able to host our versions, models, and directly infer from it. Meaning, a long and lengthy process, not streamlined, hard, long feedback loop, as, as we said, is gone. We're left with just what we need to get the values that we want. Now, let's understand why we came here. We didn't come just to talk about the new ideas and new solutions. We wanted to solve the issues that our smaller businesses have, the lack of access to capital. As you guys can see, of course, they are small, right? As the name suggests. The fact that they are small is, means the simple statistical method won't work. There's not enough data. The fact that they are unique means that you cannot make an assumption between one to another. 
you can't even make an assumption from what they had last year to what will come next year. One July makes nothing to the next one. They're hard to predict. Now, we understood that to being able to both properly predict smaller businesses, we need to change and redefine how we look at accuracy. So we've broken away from the idea of individual predictions and validating their accuracy with the mean percentage error, I mean absolute percentage error, and we pioneered a new way. We call it Horizon PE. We look at the entire horizon, all buckets of it, meaning an aggregate of predictions. And by that, we were able to properly understand the business, assess them. And we got to an amazing staggering result under 3% standard deviation. Now that number, it's not just an impressive number. It's a promise. It's a promise for those businesses. A promise that we hope will allow them to get better access to capital and eliminate some prejudice and foster inclusion. Thank you.